You can't eat that outside, buddy. Thank you. And now for something completely different, or at least half different. So today I'm not going to be moving garbage for a change, for a nice change. Um, yeah, I went on a trip. I packed my best board into my little Prius and we drove to Tennessee to visit Miss Anne of all trades. But I'm not gonna talk about that yet. I'm gonna talk about that next. First things first, there are a lot of questions and most of those questions have already been answered in previous videos, but I will go over them again. So again, the people who watch those videos will never see this, but that's okay. We sally forth. The most important thing is this. Gary is a squirrel, not a chipmunk. Gary is a white-tailed antelope ground squirrel. And currently, oh, I see him now. Hey, buddy. Currently, there are about 12 Garys that live on the property. And there's at least one pirate squirrel. Also two Henrys. So, if only we can get a George, then I feel like we'll really be, you know, living the dream. Speaking of baby grand pianos, a couple of people asked about the piano that is in the poop house, which is currently right here. I'm leaning on it as we speak. This particular baby grand piano um, used to live in LA. It was part of a theater that is very well known, and for some reasons, it had to have a new home. So, my sister being the person that she is, happened to know that this piano was going to be in transit somewhere and managed to persuade that piano to come here. So yeah, this was my birthday present last year from my sister. It is in mostly really good shape. It definitely needs a technician to come and do nice things to it. Because not only did it travel a very long way, it has now lived in the desert for a year. I won't be having anything done to it though until I get the inside of the house finished because it feels kind of pointless to have it tuned when it's still living in an uninsulated and unglass pane windowed house. A story of the house in brief. So a few years back, I told my brother, that's my brother, not my husband, definitely my brother. I said to my brother, brother, said I, uh, what if you bought me a house? Um, I would really appreciate that. Would really appreciate that. I would really appreciate that. In fact, if you bought me a house literally anywhere in the world, I would move to that place and just work on it full time. And that could be my project. And he said, hmm, some time went by. And I said, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Preferably it should be small because I would like to work on it myself. And also, you know, I don't want a house that's in super good condition. I want it to be a little bit worn around the edges so that not only can I work to fix it up, but I can also learn things along the way. And he said, hmm. And some time passed. And then one day, my brother came to me and he said, sister, said he, I found you a house. And I said, oh, thank God, because, you know, where is it? And he said, it happens to be right here in the desert. And I said, well, that's not what I was expecting, but I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll look at it, absolutely. So he brought me here. And he said, this is your house. What do you think? And I said, why do you hate me? No, actually, I looked at the house and I thought, this is really a garbage pile, like both figuratively and literally, but also could be fun. So yes, yeah, so my brother bought me this house. Um, it is on two and a half acres of land out here in Joshua Tree, California. Brief history of the house itself. What is that? Oh my gosh, it's a spider. 
Leave me alone. The previous owner died about maybe 12 years ago now, and the house has been abandoned since then. So whenever I'm clearing stuff off the property and you think, man, how could anyone live like this? Well, he didn't. He didn't live like this. This is far more severe than how he lived. Now he was a hoarder. And when I say hoarder, I mean, he and I are basically the same person. He was a person who had many interests and he would pursue them. I don't know how far because unfortunately I never got to meet him. But anyways, he left all of his possessions here, but over the past at least 10 years and upwards of 12 years, there have been a lot of squatters that have taken up residence here. So that's not indicative of how the original owner lived. In fact, he seemed like a pretty cool guy and I think that he and I would have been friends. Next item on the dop, 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 dop kit. Next item on the docket. Projected time frame is about two months from now. So it is April of this year and hopefully in June. Okay, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Hopefully sometime this year, I will start building the inside of the house. Believe me, I would also like to start building this house because once it's livable, I can live here. And that's really exciting. Like you think you want the house to be finished? I want the house to be finished. Okay, we both do. I want it more. I'm just gonna say it. I'm not trying to one up you. I'm just saying facts. So, really? A lot of people have opinions about how I sort my garbage into piles. Great, I don't have like trash out here. What I have is Dumpster Dave, and he has a very, very large trailer that he brings to the property whenever I call him. I, with the help of Bort, pack all the garbage into said container, and then he takes it away, and I don't have to think about it. I mean, in essence, I just have a garbage man with an extremely large truck dedicated to me that comes when I call him. It's really the same thing and I don't know why people are so weird about it. It's really strange how I get rid of my garbage apparently just makes other people have bad days. Burn piles. Okay. Yes, that would be amazing. If I could just take all of this lumber that I can't use and just burn it to the ground, it would be so cool because First of all, I wouldn't have to move so many things, but then also I wouldn't have to pay dump fees to get rid of it. Here's the thing though. Um, there's no water currently at the house. No water is hooked up to anywhere on this property. So if things got out of hand, which they are likely to do because out here in the desert, the wind, the wind will kick up with no warning and it will blow so hard. The property across the street, I happened to be here when that guy was burning a pile of garbage and guess what happened? The wind blew and then guess what happened? His trailer burnt to the ground. So yeah, I'm not interested in that at all. A lot of people are concerned with snakes. I am also concerned with snakes. There are a lot of them out here and a lot of different kinds. I have been extremely lucky because I've only ever seen one snake on this property. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't more snakes out here. In fact, my neighbor Dale, just down the road, told me that he has seen, for the first one this season, snake season, he saw a baby sidewinder. He saw a baby sidewinder on his property. And so he came to warn me, which is great. Um, every day that I am out here, that I am working, I am always, always looking for snakes because they can be everywhere. I, they can be anywhere. Uh, so I always look every day without fail because I take that very, very seriously. Anyways, on to the exciting part. I went to Tennessee and I almost made a spoon.
if you want to um, show me your thumb, I can also show you the the like the squeezing motion that I do. Yeah, you have rhythm going on. Oh, you got it. Wow, the A. Wow, so quick too. I feel so invasive. I'm like, I'm sorry, I just met you, Cody. There's your morning cereal and your cream. What? You got a, cap a pre-foamed <laughs> cappuccino. I'll just lick the rest off the board. I really can't can't recommend that. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. You know how sometimes you want to learn something, but maybe you don't have a friend with a goat farm, or maybe you just aren't able to go out and do a thing. Whatever the reason, that's what Skillshare is for, because it is an online creative learning community. But the tie-in, it's so much better than that. This might be the greatest tie-in in the history of history. So. I went out there, I said, hey Anne, will you teach me how to carve a spoon and I'll put it in my video and she said, hey doofus, you know I have a whole class from the sponsor. And I said, yeah, that's right. So anyway, what I did in this video, aside from milking the goats, is something that you can also do because there is a class. And this is the class. It is called Woodworking for Beginners. Source, design, and sculpt with confidence with your teachers, Anne Briggs and Josh Nava, who was also there because he came to hang out too. Here's a thing that I've known about Anne for a long time. She is the most ridiculous, no-nonsense person that I've ever met. Well, she's a close second. What she wants to do with her life is to give knowledge and experience to other people. Anything that she's learned, she wants to share. She goes over everything in this class from sourcing the wood, what types of wood are good for spoon carving, and how to process it down into blanks, and much, much more. So if you are also interested in taking a spoon carving class with Anne, you can do so because the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using my code iJessup or my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So even if spoon carving isn't for you, there are literally thousands of classes that you can take with Skillshare and you'll be surrounded by a community of diverse and like-minded people, which, I mean, that's kind of what we're all working for, right? Like that's why I went to Tennessee. I wanted to be surrounded by a person who is like-minded. <laughs> She's definitely interesting. Click on the link, take a class, take Anne's class, or don't, but also take Anne's class because that's pretty fun. Anyways, back to the farm. So we can set the forge here. Yep. If we wanted to do any kind of heat shield we can, but you could probably First cut that we're gonna do is called a. It's called a chicken wing. <laughs> Perfect. It's also called the chest lever grip for nerds. Engaging the blade by twisting it into the cut.
fantastic, Josh. So this video was all over the place, much like I am. Uh, it was really fun. It was good to get away for a while, do something different, be in some cold weather for a change, although it was a little too cold, um, and just help someone else. That always feels good. So big thank you to Anne for having me in Turbish out there for two weeks, even though we only agreed upon one week. It was so much fun and I may perhaps be going out there again very soon. That's it for today. If you want more content in between YouTube videos, go follow me on Instagram. Um, if you want to support me on Patreon, you're welcome to do that. I do uh, give more updates there, or more fre frequent? frequent updates there. Um, and. Yeah, stick around. We're actually gonna start building soon. And when I say we, I mean I, because I do this alone. Oh, this is the spoon, by the way. Um, it's still not finished. <laughs> I mean, it could be finished, um, but I'm just being really fiddly with it because I want to be carving it more than I want to be using it. But yeah, it's my spoon. What's the first word of the song? Why. Why. What's now the you? second Why word? Are. Why are there so many? Yeah, there you go. <laughs>